Um, so first up is Skip Dexter, and on deck is Amy Gradecki, and I apologize if I mispronounce any of these names. Thank you. And if you could state your oh, name. appreciate it. Your name, please, and your address. Yes, Skip Dexter, 1402 Mohican Trail. How much time do I get? I've never been to one of these. You will be given three minutes. Okay. And what I'll do is when you're down to 30 seconds, I'll call that so you know that, and then I'll call time. Okay. Uh, I have a comment, and I, I do have one lingering question that I haven't, maybe I missed it along the way. But uh, the you mentioned a couple of times the commercialization of our parks is a sensitive topic, um, as it should be. There's an emotional connection, whether it's a city park, a county park, a state park, national park. There's um, currently some controversy in California about Yosemite is uh, fighting, they're going through some, the Starbucks wants to come into Yosemite National Park, which on the surface sounds crazy, right? We're gonna plop a Starbucks into one of the most treasured parks, but then when you start to get into the details, you understand that it's a, it's a space that's already occupied by somebody else who sells coffee, they're just gonna put Starbucks into that distributor. So I think it's important to understand all of the details of what goes into it. As, uh, as a former employee of the national parks at Yellowstone and Grand Canyon, I got to experience some of the commercialization. I was actually part of a, a for-profit hospitality group that operated there a long time ago before I had kids. And um, when it's done right, it can be really cool. It can be really special. When it's done wrong, it can look like the, the spaceship of the pro football team down in Chicago that was landed a few years ago. So um, I've been to a Chinooks game. My kids have run the middle race there. I spent Father's Day there. My boys have done the baseball clinic in Madison, really enjoyed that. So I think we could be onto something really special. Something I'd like to know though is, um, you had mentioned you're both unpaid interns when you started. Could you talk about the jobs that come with this baseball club and are any of them paid? And then, <laughs> I, honestly, so, I know there's- so, so. Hi, Ron Kading, 3929 Oxford Drive. Um, I'm gonna talk about finances. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on and I heard this no tax money being paid. Um, I looked at the proposal, okay, uh, $500,000 down, there's a $4.2 million balance, and they're gonna pay $150,000 a year, multiply 150 times 20 years, and you come up with $3 million. That leaves $1.2 million. Where's it coming from? And I also did a couple other things, and I discussed this with one of our aldermen the other day. Uh, if I was going in to get a commercial loan and I had looking at a $4.7 million purchase, I had $500,000 down and I'm looking for a 4.2 mortgage. And I amortized it at over 20 years. At, uh, and I figured a good rate is four, four and a quarter percent. Payments for the year came up to $316,000. P&I, that's it we're getting $150,000, so I'm just questioning that. The other issue is if, they, if the city took out a bond, and let's say they got that bond at 3%, and over a period of 20 years, they took that $150,000 every year and paid it off towards the bond. At the end of 20 years, the city would still owe over $3 million on a 20-year facility that's probably gonna be worn out, okay? The other issue that I have is there's another clause in this proposal that says that any repairs or replacement of equipment over the cost of $5,000 is the city's responsibility, not Big Top. It's the city's. Now this is for a period of 20 years. Uh, scoreboard goes out, let's say this digital thing goes out. Uh, the cost to the taxpayers is just incredible. And I understand why Big Top is pushing this. I mean, this is a heck of a deal for them, not for us. Thanks. Hi, my name is Ken Weidman. I live at 1090 Baxter Street, number four in uh, Waukesha here. Um, Frame Park is my backyard, and I'm very happy to have it as a backyard. It's a nice backyard. Um, I grew up in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, across from uh, the Osaki County Fairgrounds, um, right across the street. Um, and it was nice being across from the street from when the county fair would be in town and such as that. What wasn't nice was when I was growing up, we had stock car races, um, which uh, attracted a large crowd and a lot of people. And 
um, would run every Wednesday night during the summers. Um, and I do recall, um, of course, my mother being more angry about it than I was, but uh, the complaints being generally the people walking through the lawn and the garbage afterwards and everything like that, um, and the noise. Well, of course, baseball is not as loud as stock car racing, but um, it's just having it's like inviting half a town into your front yard. Um, and my concern is for my neighborhood. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not seeing the whole parking thing because right now, you know, if, if Waukesha were unpopulated, then, yeah, you'd have plenty of parking. Those thousand spots that you're talking about are very often occupied by other Waukesha events. I drive in downtown Waukesha, I work, I live in downtown Waukesha, I work in downtown Waukesha. I know what it's like to drive here on a normal day and it ain't fun. You know, it's doable, but it's not fun. And then adding an event that's going to draw between 2,500 and 4,000 people how many times a week uh, is bringing that much traffic into the area. My other concern is um, having events that have alcohol served uh, so close um, several times a week, I would imagine. I don't know exactly what the schedule would be. Um, and the effect of uh, some of the people, I'm sure most people here drink responsibly, but I do know that some don't. Um, and don't feel like having to deal with drunks walking back to their cars through my backyard, um, possibly causing trouble, who knows what. Um, and, you know, other questions that come to mind, are you going to have a larger police presence? That might be good for the employment of the police department, but... Um, just all these things that uh, logistically I'm, I'm not I'm not seeing, you know, and um, so those are my questions: is um, how can you ensure that uh, our our neighborhood will be kept the way it is now? Good evening, Sandy Holmes, 1700 East Christine Avenue. Um, this wasn't on my comments, but I I feel I have to say that we're all limited to three minutes. I'm sitting here watching the clock. And unless there is a very specific question with a very short answer, we all sat quietly and listened to your one-hour dog and pony show. And we don't need to hear long answers. You took another three minutes to answer the man. So I'm not going to ask any questions because it's just going to result in you guys talking for another three minutes. Everybody knows I'm against this project. I've read the entire 18-page proposal in detail. Of course, there's almost no exhibits. I believe that many of the claims made by Mr. Lehner are not consistent with what is in the proposed document. I'm not here to talk about baseball or redevelopment of the White Rock area. I'm here to talk about Frame Park, the deed issues, and LawCon. The financials don't play out as presented, but let the bankers speak to that. Nothing in the documents secures the city. Normal TIF purpose is to increase the tax base. This TIF wouldn't do that. You talk about redevelopment. Redevelopment of this area is for the rich and it will displace the disadvantaged. A park in a different location doesn't help the people that live near this park. You move it to Meadow View, these people aren't going to be able to let their kids go there. I mean, this, this document goes so far as to give up the naming rights of the park. And I'll tell you what, when it was put in, I was the nearest neighbor to Five Diamonds. And you can tell me that the footprint's only going to be 110%, but I'm a quarter mile from Five Diamonds, and I hear every ding of the baseball bat. I hear every cheer. So even though the footprint only changes by 110%, you will affect the entire park. I know it. I live right next to Five Diamonds. You talk about the people in Kenosha or La Crosse or wherever, and they love it. I wonder who you asked, but don't answer that. But I suspect that it wasn't the neighbors, but rather the mayor. I mean, I was at the meeting five days ago at Wednesday. Word for word, this was seconds. the same. You've got the home run going into the water, and then... No, it's going to be safe. No one's going to get hit by a baseball. Uh, the 
uh, Elvis Presley thing, the whole thing. I mean, it's very well choreographed. You do a great job. You talk about the first chance for a young person to play baseball, but these are collegiate. So the real first chance is at five diamonds. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, give, time. Thank you, I'm done. Hi, I'm Sue Quinn Augustine at 1501 Pine Street, Waukesha. I'm new to this. This is my first public meeting, and it's been a real eye-opener. However, I have been a longtime user and advocate of Green Park. Goes back to my family history, or my great-grandfather was one of the mason, stonemasons who built the formal gardens. You know, it's, it's very important. It's, my son knows about it. Other family members know about it. It's part of our heritage, our, our community. I look at this and I see a big blob. Seriously, it's going to ruin the aesthetics of our park. Our park is special to us. It's not for your profit. It is for our community. The deed was given to the city of Waukesha by Andrew J. Frame in 1926 with the condition that it stays as a public park use only. You're a private for-profit. You don't fit that. And yes, the little boat renter, he's not a big conglomerate like you are. I have read a good majority of the contract. I, have do, I do have a couple questions about the contract. One is, what's going to happen if uh, the responsibility for, for the shortfalls in, ev in revenue projects or projections, is the city taxpayers going to be taking on that responsibility, or do you come up with it, since it's your project? Secondly, uh, when you guys decide that it's time for expansion, where is this going to go? into our formal gardens that aren't supposed to be touched or any other part of the park? Why can't you go back in, uh, what is it, uh, station number, fire station number five? There's a big land use back there. It's got a baseball template there that would be really easy for you to convert. Easy access to Highway 94 or I-94, one of your, your things that you said, you know, easy access has better parking. There aren't so many neighborhoods around that area. You're close to a, a fire station with EMS and everything right there. You don't have to worry about people walking the trails getting bombarded by 30 baseballs. seconds. So, you know, you, you are a for-profit organization. You don't have the best interests of our people, our public parks, our citizens at heart. And I find that horrible, and I like some of these questions answered. I don't see it right. I'm sorry. I, I really don't see it. It's, it's not proper. You're taking something in a way that's a great asset and value to our community and to the kids and to the other people around here. It's a Do historic have, landmark. Okay. Scott Bauman, uh, Tall Grass Circle, Waukesha. I have concerns about the financing portion of it. I, this, uh, The project could be wildly successful. It has been in other cities, as they're saying. Um, if it is so successful, why are we as the taxpayers, why is the city footing the upfront of about 90% of the cost? We're, we're, we're paying eight times what they're willing to kick in up front. There are people that are critical of the Foxconn project. Foxconn's putting in 10 billion and the state's putting in 3 billion and people are saying that's way too much. That's only a third of what we're, we're putting in eight times what they're putting in. Um, the frequently asked question sheet says approximately four and a half million. My question, what if it comes in at five to six million? They're still paying 500,000, I'm guessing, and we're gonna pay all of the rest if there's any overruns. That's in, that needs to be asked, uh, answered. Um, and the word, and I heard the word used earlier, the lease contribution and on here it says it's going to be payment paid over time through a lease contribution. Why is the word contribution? Does that mean if they can't pay the full amount in a year for whatever reason, they don't have to pay it? Um, I, I have real concerns. And why aren't we, if it's so successful, why aren't we getting a piece of the, of the concessions? Why aren't we getting a piece of the gate? 
Why, why are we just getting a lease payment? If this is so successful, we should be getting more out of this project. Good evening. My name is uh, Scott Amphitson. I'm at 802 Glen Ridge Court. Um, I think you can see that it's really, it's not as much about baseball as it is Frame Park. And one of the things that you had talked about, Mr. Lehner, a little earlier, I had requested through a Freedom of Information Act for what we did in 2008, <clears throat> and to help correct you, Mr. Connor, we did not get approval from the DNR in 2008 to move forward. The Common Council passed. I've got, I, I got correspondence with Jennifer. The information you did not provide, she did provide me with the information from 2008, and I can be glad to send you the email. And then in talking with her this morning through email, she also told me that a proposal was not submitted yet with a plan, and I'm sure you're working out the details about how you're going to pay for the land in the swap. But as part of that, there's six components that have to be met, and one of that is that the land that is replacing the land on Frame Park has to be an equal or greater value than the land that sits on Frame Park as if you were to sell it in the open market. And I wanted to clarify that because everybody says that we are not, there, there's a bunch of misinformation. Well, I want to make sure we're clearing up the misinformation here as it's received from the DNR because they are supposed to be a line of defense to help protect that land that is a park for us, the citizens. All right, I, I know I didn't use my three minutes, but what I wanted to point out was, first of all, if you have those documents, when I asked for the documents from the Freedom of Information Act, you did not provide Sir. them. Oh, okay. I yeah. left early. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I know, if it, if they, but what they went they through that. your office to come to me. I'm just letting you know because now it's on record. And then also there's six other items that you have to comply with. But the biggest point when you're talking about this swap between Frame Park, which is uniquely special, we're not in New York City, but it's our Central Park, okay? So, I mean, you wouldn't go put a baseball field in Central Park. That's why you're seeing the passion in this room, okay? Everybody here, I coached my son, and we went to Cooperstown. Everybody here, most people love baseball, so it, it's not about baseball. And I think they got a great format that everybody here agrees with. But the point is, it's Frame Park, and that's what the issue is. And what I'm talking about for land value, you can say that, 22 acres that you're talking about pulling out of Frame Park versus 25 acres at Meadowview, why don't you put it at Meadowview? It's untouched. It's a fresh start. You've got to dig down at least two to three feet to put the drain way for the uh, artificial turf anyways. You're going to tear up Frame Park and what that footprint is. So don't make people think that you're just going in there and replacing lights because you're not. You go with the turf field and it's going to go down three feet minimum to put the drainage for the water. Okay. Chris Spalman, uh, Tallgrass Circle, City of Waukesha. I didn't read this whole proposal, but I still have a couple questions. I'm just thinking anytime you're negotiating a public-private partnership, you don't want to leave anything on the table, and that would include parking and a parking plan. I think if you're going to be voting on something, that should be included. I also think, and maybe this information is out there, I get the idea of the revenue stream because I think down the line, the city's just with the way the state law is, the city's going to be, cities across the state are going to be in a lot of trouble meeting their expenses. So I'm hoping that we can not only reduce our spending, but I understand the idea of revenue and development and how that links to how much you can do in a city. That being said, has there been an independent cost benefit or risk benefit analysis for people to review? I think that would be especially important for the finance committee. Also, there's been talk on one of the slides that was presented about three different types of development in the area. Where's that information and what does it look like? Has there been a traffic study? What's the impact of the railroad tracks that are right near Frame Park and how is that going to impact what's going on? How does that impact emergency vehicles? How does that impact our police department getting there if there's a major event? And then I, I think the answer was already, I think the question was already asked about cost overruns. I think you answered that. And then I also understand, since this is a large scale public event, you're gonna require insurance and that cost needs to be paid by you. Thank you. 
But you understand the concern. I, I just believe anytime there's a public-private partnership, you don't want to leave anything on the table. I think you have to proceed with caution. I think these guys have a phenomenal business model. I would love to start a business and have TIF money to start my own business. Can you guys do that for me? Can anyone help me out? But it is special for the city because it's in a park and it's a large scale public event. The city attorney could tell you about that, but you're going to need your own indemnification or whatever risk policy. So. Hi, my name is Frank Royal. I live on 314 Darlene Drive. And, you know, you talk about the Fox River there, the DNR. If you look at uh, Burlington, uh, all these towns that got a river like we do running through. Now, you can't go two feet down to put drain tiles down because the groundwater is so high. There is a possibility there could be contaminants in the ground around there because of the foundries and the stuff that went on before, if you read about what's there. Who's going to eat that cost? Have you done the studies in that? Are we going to move stuff away from the river? The park we got is great. There isn't a lot of cost to keep that park up. I don't know where you're getting $4.5 million to keep up frame park. I mean, no matter what you do, I mean, I, I like your baseball idea, but if that floods and you can't use that park, are you going to come up with your 150000 bucks? Who's going to replace all the lights and everything that gets ruined? You can't control Mother Nature. They're taking out dams. Everybody's going green. Everybody's doing different things. Our kids, the, the high schools, they come there, they have fundraisers. That's all part of being the camaraderie of a team. I was a, a booster club president. We put in, we got uh, batting tunnels and pitching machines for Carroll College, Waukesha South and everybody. We raised thousands of dollars off that little park there. Now we're going to have a conglomerate take it over. These kids aren't going to be able to raise money. Parents are struggling to pay for their kids to come and play sports. When I was a kid, I walked in there. I got free driver's ed and stuff. Now you got to have 300 bucks. You got to be insured. You got to have everything, you know. I mean. Uh, you know, you got a great idea. You know, go out, out here by the Waukesha Bible Church where they have school. They were going to build another uh, site out there. You've got that big hunk of land there. We're going to build a high school. That went through. You got 164. You got 43 access over there. You know, it might be another place. I'm not trying to shoot your job, you know, what you have going. It's a great thing. My son was drafted by the Brewers out of high school. He didn't go. He went to college. I mean, that park meant a lot to us. It's done a lot for a lot of people in this state. And, and it's a beautiful thing. But you guys got to remember, it's on a floodplain. And it's going to interfere your business if the, if the river goes over. And Lord help us, you know, if it does. I mean, well, Discount Liquor used to be a Sears store. Water went there. I've been 50-some years here. I'm 63, going to be 63. And I've seen a lot of stuff. And I don't know, I mean, uh, to, to, to change it, I mean, will it even support putting two stories over there? Who's going to pay for the cost overruns? You could find out. I mean, you got a little shootsy building. There isn't much cost if that floods or gets ruined. But I hope you, the city takes some of that land back in TIFs. Look at Milwaukee. Seconds. They've got so many TIFs, they're hurting for tax dollars because all these special deals, nobody's paying anything. They're getting to build the products, but nobody's paying nothing, and the taxpayers are getting killed. So please look at everything. Thank you. My name is Kirk Dunlap. I live at 1221 Wedgwood Drive. I'm a lifelong resident of Waukesha. And uh, I've been to three of these other parks, Green Bay, Madison, and Mequon. And they are family. They are children friendly. They really appeal to everybody. And I can tell you, if you haven't gone there, then you just shouldn't even be in this meeting because that, that is a really important part of what's coming to this town. The other part of it, the other comment I would say is our summer usage of frame is about five months, 150 days. So we're talking about 36 to 40 games. I assume 40 means some playoffs. That sounds good to me. That's like 25% of our prime time. You, you could look at it two ways. Well. We're only going to change things a little bit for 25% of the time. Or you could say, hey, 25% of the time, that park's going to be hopping. It's going to have life, it's going to be fun, and it's going to add enthusiasm, not just to the people in the park, but the, uh, in the ballpark, but in the park as a whole. The other thing I was pleased to hear, tonight started out talking about the, the, the zone, of the, the redevelopment zone, and not the ballpark. Well, this ballpark is the anchor tenant or the catalyst for that redevelopment. You, if you don't put something there, it's not going to redevelop. It's not going to redevelop by itself. 
It needs something to drive it. Now, every investment's risky. And we already heard, you know, from our administrator that this investment is better than not making it. But with this investment, you have the ability to, to create something bigger and better. So I, my point is, you know, we, we, ought, we have to have a little guts once in a while when something new comes along. And this, this you know, complete resistance to a new and exciting opportunity surprises me. And I'm not that much younger than most of you guys. So... Uh, I'm in favor of it, and I think you need to uh, keep an open mind. Thank you. Hi, my name is Karen Frey McDonald. Um, I'm at 507 North Grand Avenue, um, which is the house that my great great grandfather built. Um, first of all, let me just say, if my father were alive, um, as I've spoken with one of his good friends, he would just tear out the baseball completely and put in a motocross track. Let me just start there. Um, my great great grandfather donated the park and liked baseball and golf. Nobody here is against baseball, but Frame Park is not the place for a stadium where you are able to sell tickets, food, and alcohol. The grandstand shown earlier was an unfair comparison. That was not a for-profit entity. It was for private use only. There's currently, this is my biggest problem, there's currently land for sale on the Fox River at a million dollars an acre. How can you justify, you and the city, justify taking some of the most valuable land in Waukesha and giving it over to a for-profit company. That makes absolutely no sense. The, the, the area that we're talking about is the baseball stadium. Yes. And it's a park, and it's going to continue to remain this, the same exact uses. No, so it's not, because it's a privately owned hmm. company coming in to land that was donated and deeded for mm -hmm. public use only. It's a very big difference. Right, and we have th all the existing public uses would remain, and in fact, there'll be additional public uses on that property. Except that you have to pay to get into a game. <coughs> for that event, correct. Yes. For that event, correct. So how is that public? Because all the existing public uses that are there today continue. Except for the during, the, during, the base, during the baseball game. Correct. Yes, they well, the, the land was specifically deeded for public use forever. I'm Bruce Fleischman. I own three properties within 200 yards of Frame Park. I own two directly across the road. Guess what? No one's talked to me. Not after the last time I spoke out here years ago against this project, and not now. You guys love 17 minutes. You talked about how great Frame Park was. Guess what? It is great. We don't need this, all right? We're not looking for a Cadillac. We don't want a BMW. We're happy with a Chevy. You can sit here and tell us all the great things about BMW. They're a great car. We don't want it. We're happy with our Chevy. You guys talk about all oh, the neighbors. That's hearsay up where you're at. I'm a neighbor here. I've owned my property on Eels Avenue for over 40 years. I pay property tax on four homes in the city of Waukesha. You want to know how much money that adds up to over the decades? I have my son and my other relatives here. My family, my, I'm sorry, my wife's family are Hind Avenue, after the Hind family. Oh, hey, I'll do some name dropping. I landscape for Carroll College as a private contractor. Therefore, I'll use their name. I'll use Habitat for Humanity. I'll just keep on throwing all these other names in to support my idea. I want to sell everybody. Buy my BMW. I'll give you monthly payments that are only $30 a month. Don't worry about the $800,000 vehicle. This is being sold to us. We don't want it. Oh, it won't interfere with the light of sight from White Rock. Wait a minute here. You got bleachers there. There's parking. Years ago, I don't remember the number anymore, I walked around and counted every parking spot on every road around Frame Park. There was nowhere even near a thousand. You guys are throwing all this misinformation out, misdirecting, selling a BMW. We're not interested. You hear people talk about the cost of this. Guess what? Money is real. You can't just say, oh, and blow them off because they're done talking their three minutes. You guys have heard over and over again, frame, the relatives of, frame, of Andrew Frame doesn't want this. 
Who are you working for? Not the relatives who have been here, the people who have lived here all their lives. My son Patrick, wherever the heck he is over here, thank you, Pat, he lives in the house in Eels Avenue. He was born there. He's over 40 years old. We are the ones who know what Frame Park is. It's not about private. 30 seconds. It's not about private money. We don't care that Frame, cost, frame Park costs us money. We have a lot of things that cost us money in the city of Waukesha. We do not need to take prime land and use it for this. There's all kinds of land you can use, and we don't need to finance it because somewhere along the line you think you can justify it. We're not interested, even though it is a BMW. Steve Edlin, 426 Prospect Avenue. You know, in 2008, this proposal was put before our community. Um, and at that time, the proposal was the developer was going to build the entire infrastructure and gift it to the city. Now things have turned. Now the city is going to build something for a for-profit company that doesn't pay its ball players one penny because they're college amateur players. They make the money off of beer sales, concession stand, ticket sales. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't like. I don't like employees not getting paid. Um, you know. When we talk about redevelopment of that area, Frame Park and that area are mutually exclusive because putting a stadium in Frame Park does not generate any tax revenue for a TIF district. Okay, so that's, that's a completely separate issue. And when you're talking about redeveloping the TIF district, um, there's one big concern that I have. As part of it is Habitat for Humanity, um, you propose some houses there to increase the tax base. For those people who don't know, your water bill is going to jump to between 200 to 300, water and sewer, I want to say and sewer, is going to jump to between 200 and 300 dollars per month. Habitat for Humanity is priced out of this city. It is not for low income. When we talk about redevelopment of that area, Frame Park was already redeveloped in the 1990s. Beverly Chapper, Chappie, Peter Lettenberger, and Donald Funslingland were part of the Fox River Development Authority in 1990. They volunteered as community leaders, giving up eight years of their life to redevelop Frame Park. Frame Park is just fine. There is nothing wrong with it. It doesn't need to be redeveloped. As a matter of fact, at that time, they were discussing removing the ball diamond from Frame Park. And it was a long discussion. They decided to leave it in there for the benefit of Carroll College and the high school teams. Currently, the high school teams in Carroll College do not exceed the capacity of the 200 stadium seats, as, we're, as you guys call it, stadium, they're bleachers. They don't exceed that capacity, so it suits their needs just fine. They're moving to spring baseball now. They will never need a 2,500 seat stadium. So to try to use them, the school district of Waukesha, as a pawn for public relations is abhorrent. 30 seconds. That's using children for your own gain. I don't like that. The stadium that you have in Kenosha, I'd like you to answer this question, but wasn't that an empty stadium that the city of Kenosha was trying to get somebody in there? And isn't that true of a lot of the stadiums within the Northwoods League? I know you've had some teams that went belly up, like in Brainerd and in Illinois, which Chad Bauer, the last proposer, Sorry, time. is now the owner of a team called the Riveters in a stem stadium that was empty. Thank you. Uh, James Sisson, 906 Valley Hill. Um, like others, I'm, uh, I'm not against baseball. I think what you have here is great. I'm not a fan of it being at Frame Park. Uh, I think you made a comment about there was either seven or eight of the nine. Uh, seven of nine. Yeah. Are at uh, other facilities that are in parks and made me think, why is that? It's because it's tax free. So the, the idea of this creating any kind of tax revenue, I think is bogus. So um, not a fan. That's all I got to say. If you add up the 500,000 plus the 175,000, which is the 150 plus the $25,000 improvements, it only adds up to $4 million. And if it, somebody else brought up the fact that if there's any kind of damage that happens and something has to get replaced, you're going to tell me that nothing's going to get replaced over the 20 years? Seriously? 
No, and, but, but we have to, we continue to have to maintain the stadium over the life of that 20 years as well. Right. Where's that money going to come from? And, and today, it's coming from tax dollars. Oh, yeah, but you're talking about a 2,500-seat stadium that is $4.2 million versus uh, 200 bleachers? You, you're talking apples and oranges. Hi, everyone. Mike Walsh, 2412 Kestrel Lane. Uh, first disclosure, I'm not a big baseball fan, so sorry. And I haven't been to those other stadiums, but I'm still here. Uh, I am part of the NIMBY group, which is the not in my backyard, right? So, But I don't live over there. And a lot of people have said, well, let's put it here, let's put it there, let's put it there. But it's got to be somewhere, so I guess you guys chose Frame Park. So the city of Waukesha over the years has done a lot of, uh, a lot of projects. They put a gazebo, which you guys are modeling, um, on top there in the city downtown. Kind of a negative thing for me. But uh, the bus depot, we spent $15 million on to bring people somewhere. Nobody showed up. Uh, the Clark Hotel, don't worry, I'm, you guys, there's more to this, though. <laughs> promise. No, Clark Hotel, $1.5 million. Uh, they're not paying their bills. Uh, the Mill Reserve is another bad project, and then you guys want to do City Hall, and then I'll get on to Buckner in a second. Um, so uh, Buckner and Horeb, they bring 60,000 to 75,000 swimmers per year with an 80 to 90 percent recovery rate, which means the city is on the hook for 20 to $60,000 a year currently, and uh, about 10 years ago, it was about $200,000 a year. All this is going somewhere, I promise. So um, anyway, so I think it's a good project, you know. <laughs> Who would ever think I'd be up here saying I think this is a good project? You know, we want to spend $8 million on Buckner Pool, or it's been talked about, to have to service 60 to 75,000 people, it's all kids, okay? What about the adults? So I, I do have questions on the financials, and I want to make sure the financials uh, work out for us. But if we can bring an event, I'm not hung up on the park thing, I'm sorry, you know, to the people that are hung up on the park. I think it's a beautiful project. I think when it's all built, you know, it's like any, any other building that goes in. It looks like hell until it's in there. The, the park is nothing special right now. It, the river's green in the summertime with moss. I mean, so there's not much to see there. Um, though I do like the river. I do swim in it. Well, I kayak on it. Uh, we got a shortfall of money. The uh, city administrator during the event on Wednesday evening for Aaron Perry said that there, in worst case scenario, could be a $1.5 million dollar uh, hook for the citizens. I want to make sure he addresses that tonight. So, because I don't like smoke and mirrors, I sell cars for 28 years, and the one thing I do is I sell with integrity and I tell all the facts. So, I want to make sure that everything is talked about with facts. Uh, the other thing that bothers me uh, is that we have city leaders. Uh, the only person in this room who, in the city leadership, that said that he's on board so far with it is the city administrator. Everybody else said they don't have an opinion. You all got a dang opinion. Please share it with 30 us. 30 seconds. Okay. If you are leaning one way or the other, say it. Be honest, okay? If you're going to vote for it, be honest with your people. If you're really not true with it, you know, please, please work it out. And quit demonizing businesses, okay? This is, <laughs> it's a for-profit business. Without for-profit businesses, all of us would be on welfare, but there wouldn't be any money to pay the welfare with. So, you know, <laughs> that's it. Um, thanks. A <laughs> uh, couple of comments and just one question, I think. Um, I would have appreciated having, since you've got such nice graphics and handouts, I would have appreciated uh, a graphic that shows where these thousand parking pace places are. <clears throat> that would have been good for me. Um, also, I guess I missed it in your presentation or falling asleep that uh, you know, who owns these other parks that you're at or the facilities on those parks? That's the question. But the last comment is, it's been stated several times, <clears throat> excuse me, that the uh, cost to maintain Frame Park would be more if this development doesn't take place than if it did take place. <clears throat> I think a couple of people previously talked about aesthetics. And if this is just an issue of money, I'm sure there's other ways to raise money to maintain the park without putting in bleachers and a grandstand. And it also bothers me a little bit with the concessions. Someone previously mentioned that, you know, how about uh, Waukesha business people operating the concessions? Or, you know, it'd be nice. Each tavern once a, once a month gets to sell their beer and the profit goes to the people that are in Waukesha. 
Um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, David Goldner, 911 Pleasant Street. And I'm gonna give you the answer before I ask the question. So the, the answer is either the taxpayers or Big Top. So my question is, who pays for maintenance and who pays for damages in the future as after this park is development? Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'd like to thank the two gentlemen, first of all, for the great presentation they gave. You gave a lot of numbers, you gave a beautiful graphic. However, when some of the slides were showing, um, I saw at one point, I believe the city, it was going to cost the city three and a half million, I thought I saw on the slide, and yet the handout talks about four and a half million. Um, like Mr. Brown, I had the question about the parking. It would have been great to have had a map to actually show us where are the thousand spots. I'm wondering, are you counting up by the courthouse up on the hill? I don't know where a thousand are. Um, I do have big concerns about the bleachers um, and being able to see the river, to see the park fr from White Rock. Um, Mr. Lanner, I, I, we've not met before. Um, I'm thinking you're newer to the community. Personally, I found it offensive to see your Christmas card up there with your family because to me it seemed like you were trying to make it be you know, kind of like, guys, I'm one of you. I, I've lived in, in, um, in Waukesha over 30 years, and our family has gone to Frame Park too. We've walked around it. Um, you know, we've gone to events there. And, you know, I guess I should have brought my Christmas card too and shown my family at Frame Park. I found that offensive, and frankly, I found it offensive where it was listed that Mr. Frame, I think that's his name, uh, how he actually had invested in a baseball uh, team or was interested in baseball years ago because I think that's irrelevant now. Our family is not in support of Frame Park being utilized by a for-profit, for, uh, uh, for, for a company, you know? And uh, great company, it sounds like. You guys have a lot of knowledge, experience. I'd love to see you not at Frame Park. Thank you. Questions, the first question about the 3.5 million, that was um, our contribution. The city contribution is between 3.8 and 4.2 million. Um, you know, I, I, I get frustrated when you say, well, the, the, your contribution being three and a half million, it isn't here's three and a half million. Correct. You're talking about three and a half million over 20 years. Okay, just be sure and say that okay. because that's not what I think the city is going, when we talk about how much we're going to pay, we're not saying four and a half million over 20 years, are we? Right. Um, I'd also like to add one other question because I, another thing when at the next meeting that will be happening in a week or two, I'd love to see um, a slide showing because it's been repeatedly said that the city is going to have to pay seconds. that money anyway for upkeep of Frame Park. I don't understand that. It's been said over and over again. Show us the numbers. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, up on Ridgewood Drive by Waukesha South. I've actually got 10 questions, some for the city, some for uh, Big Top. Um, the first, it was one and a half million over 20 years for the current <laughs> park upkeep, correct? That's the number you, you had said uh, approximately? Okay. Um, on that, um, with a 20 year lease, you're looking at at least two turf replacements. You're looking at anywhere between, I don't know, like minimum 800,000 to 3 million if you end up with, you know, three replacements. Um, is that being budgeted? I'm gonna try and run through these real quick and give you. Um, so the cost of that, um, traffic flow. Like uh, if you've been in Waukesha, you know traffic to 94 through that area is absolutely abysmal. Um, I can't imagine <laughs> adding that much traffic and, and, and adding activities in there without causing major congestion. As mentioned before, uh, the trains don't run on a schedule. Um, that's also gonna add to that, that congestion in that area. Um, what, like, what, is, what is the plan for that? Um, uh, let's see, what else? Um, the community redevelopment. Um, I've been to the Madison Mallards. Uh, you know, the, the area is built up very, very nicely around that park, or, or kind of, but the park is nice. Um, what kind of development have you seen in other facilities? Oh, you know, the, the, um, I know a couple of the pictures you showed are in re, uh, extreme residential areas. 
so there's probably not much development being done in those areas. Um, the previous, um, in 2008, um, the uh, was being up, supposed to be um, put up front was $2 million for the facilities. Um, you guys are offering $500,000. Um, I'm just curious why, you know, uh, the, the difference, you know, we're, we're uh, nine years later. Um, river and alcohol. Um, I know the alcohol issue is brought up. Um, in Milwaukee, we have people drowning because they're drunk. Uh, La Crosse has the same issues, and they've got railings all along that river um, in both cities. We don't have any of that um, along that river walk. Um, I think, yeah, sorry to kind of throw it out there. Um, I don't know if you, where you want to start with that. Forgive us if we miss them, please fire yeah. them back at us. But uh, turf replacement, um, and all of our consulting, all the work we've done, turf normally lasts 10 to 12 years. We would be on the hook for that replacement, um, that capital improvement over the term of the lease. So we think there would be, over the 20 year lease, there would be one turf replacement, that'd be our responsibility. Okay, uh, real quick with that. Sorry. Yes, sir. Um, so I'll I went to Carroll, played at Carroll. They were expecting at least 10 years out of that, and I think they got seven before they had to replace that field. Uh, just curious, I don't know if things have come along. Uh, yeah, so technology has got, I mean, that's a fascinating field. Every year we're seeing technology in that field get better, prices go down. Okay. Um, a lot of it ends up with the maintenance, and that would be our responsibility to maintain the field, okay. and we would have an interest to maintain it well, to preserve it as long as possible. Okay. Uh, we operate other facilities with, uh, with a turf field, and. I have experience doing that and are confident that we can uh, okay. treat it in a way that will last 10 to 12 years. What's your oldest uh, field with turf? Uh, four, going on four years. Okay. And it's uh, close to new. Okay. Um, I guess the traffic would be the next issue. I don't know if that would be a city issue or the... Yeah, I mean, like we said, we have, they have to develop a traffic management plan for the facilities. We have uh, community events down there on a regular basis. Um, the... Uh, the timing of the games helps to manage that traffic flow. Um, it's typically in an evening game, um, so it's not during a, you know, a lot of high traffic uh, 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 events. And so, again, the parking plan has to be approved. And, and one of the benefits of having uh, parking at different parking lots is that not everybody's trying to access the same streets at exactly the same time. They're coming in from different directions, and they're leaving different directions. Sure, but you're so limited right there with White Rock. With and, White Rock, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's White Rock, and there's and Moreland. other. I mean, that's like, Moreland. It's, it's, it's just a jam. I mean, exactly, <laughs> and, and, and we, we haven't experienced really heavy traffic issues with other events that have been there of similar size, um, and, and we've, we've handled a lot of that over the what years. What other events have we had that have brought 2,500 to 4,000 people down to that area? The Oktoberfest, uh, the Fiesta Waukesha. Um, those are just a couple of them that, that bring... That well, I mean, I've been down there for, like, the, the ski shows. Um, I'm trying to think one of the activities we went down where they bring the helicopter in, like, the congestion National is real. National night out. Uh, yeah, like, the, the, you know, that, that congestion is real. And now we're talking about 30 to 40 games and then additional, whether you do concerts, you know, whatever else we're bringing in. Um, just I, for, for next presentation, I'd love to see something. I mean, even if it's, like, an idea. Our last two projects, most common development, uh, you're seeing around the facilities, uh, quite a few restaurants and housing. Those, those are the two most common okay. uh, things, and, and candidly, the, the most interested um, in folks we're talking to, the most interested in parties coming along with this project. Okay. Um, and then I guess for the city would be the, well, the, actually the cost, if you under the cost, like what would the difference between the cost? It was $2 million previously for the previous uh, uh, proposal, and it's, you know, I guess. Yeah, I, I think... Um, you know, if you look at the last proposal, it didn't work, it never happened, yep. didn't come together. And as we've, uh, we've got 10 years of experience, we, we've got, we've, we've rebuilt uh, three stadiums in the last six, seven years. So we've experienced doing this and uh, we feel this is the most sustainable way to, to partner with the city uh, to, to, to make this work for both parties. Okay. Um, oh, and then the okay. safety oh. issue, the alcohol and the river. I, I don't know if that's your issue, if it's a city issue. I mean, it's both, I guess. I think it would be all, all of our issues. Yeah. I think it's a, a great question. I think we'd, um, uh, you know, it all comes back to um, the experience inside the park and, first of all, responsibly serving alcohol and training your staff, making sure you do that well. Uh, but uh, we will have to take precautions, work with police, work with the city to make sure that that's not an issue. And we'll also, you know, post-event, uh, have to secure the river and secure those areas to make sure there's no issues. Okay. Um, yeah, just for the record, like I came in against this and I – I don't know, I'm on the fence now. Like, I, I, I kind of like the idea. Um, I've been to Mal James, I liked it. Um, 
but the congestion, I just, I, I think it's a real issue in that area. I'm Dave Jones, 1516 Aaron Lane. Uh, my wife and I have lived here for a while. We are Carroll graduates, but don't let the baldness and the beard gray belie you. I'm in my early 30s. My wife's in her late 20s, so we are the millennials of which we were talking at the beginning. Uh, we moved to Waukesha, even though I could have lived in Tosa, Milwaukee, wherever I work downtown. Uh, we wanted to live here because it's a growing city. We love it here. The people here are amazing. I grew up in McGuanago, so just down the road. My wife's from Aaron, so we're like country folk, if you will, and yet this was kind of where we, where we landed even though I wanted to live in Milwaukee. Uh, I love this city. I would love to see a ballpark here, so I am absolutely 100% for this. Uh, our city is growing. I was looking at population growth. It's not huge, but even in the last 20 years, I think we're up like 15,000, so we're growing, and it's gonna continue. The trajectory, if you look, is, is growing significantly. So there's gonna be more people here. This is a great way to encourage more people to come to town, encourage people to see our great city, to move here, to bring their families here, to provide more of a tax base for us, to do greater things, to preserve those parks in a, in a grander way. Uh, this discussion reminds me a lot of what happened way back in the day uh, at a little place called Wrigley Field. This is the exact same discussion. Oh, the lights are bright, the noise, whatever it was. Um, they ended up building it, and it's now one of America's greatest ballparks, right? No one wants to see it torn down. Everybody loves it. It's, it's the Chicago Cubs. I hate the Cubs, but I love going to Wrigley because it's, it's Wrigley, and I would live next door to it. I have friends that live right down the road, and I love it. Nobody's peeing on their lawn. Nobody's getting cra I mean, people get crazy, but it's not... It's not out of the ordinary. It's nothing more than we would see at some of the other local events here with people having one or two many drinks and responsible serving. Good job. Good on you guys. I'll hold you to it. Um, I think that's all I have. I, I just want to see it built. I think the city's growing, and I think this is a great opportunity for us to strut our stuff in front of the rest of the counties around here and the rest of the cities and show what we've got. Thank you. Somehow, I don't know how I wind up being last, but I do want to say, and I've said it before, I love baseball but I love Frame Park more. And I'm not really giving you questions, I really just have a few comments. And one bothers me is that oftentimes you refer to as 30, 40, whatever the number of events are that would be held in Frame Park, but yet the contract states 85 events per year. And that's a big difference. That's 50% more than what I keep hearing. The other thing that bothers me is $500,000 now is not the same as what $500,000 is going to be in 15 years, 18 years, 20 years. There's no planned increases, no planned increases for maintenance, for the contract, for nothing. And yet I was told by you guys that my property, which is really close, I live, by the way, at 1090 Baxter Street. I literally have Frame Park in my backyard and I love it there. I've owned that half a million dollar property for almost 18 years. I'm not a newcomer just because I've only lived here for two years. My concern is you have mentioned neighborhood impact plan numerous times. Everybody uses that real fancy word, but quite frankly, I've not heard what it is and I don't think any of the others around me have either. And lastly, I have to say this, and I'm, I'm saying this more directed towards Kevin than I am anyone else. This is just a comment, but I'm actually feeling insulted and hurtful that you are calling my neighborhood a blighted area. I'm really insulted by that. Yes, you don't say Baxter Street, but you say White Rock, one block away. I don't believe it's a blighted area. I think it's an older area in a city that's old. And to say it's blighted and to add a few new houses is gonna make it change, and that that's gonna be affordable living, I provide affordable living in Waukesha. I have a commitment to providing that. It's my choice, it's my husband's choice. One of my tenants was here tonight and he spoke absolutely without me knowing that he was coming here. And I think that's important because I didn't offer him anything to do so. So I just want to say that I'm hurt. I'm hurt because I don't think I live in a blighted area. And I don't, I don't think my $500,000 property, give or take a few thousand, is something that's to be taken lightly. And I don't think my opinion should be taken lightly. And I won't even mention parking because my husband's blood pressure will go up. So thank you all very much.
thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, actually, I was just going to listen, but I did jot some notes down before I came. Uh, Mike Payne, I'm at 1001 Downing Drive in Waukesha. Um, again, thanks for the opportunity. Kevin, Mr. Lehner, thanks for putting this together tonight. The guy's a big top. I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, it does ha have some risk to expand your business, and we I understand that. Um, over the last several weeks, I've watched the progress, uh, and I've read the Freeman, and I've talked to a lot of folks. Um, obviously, there's a group of citizens that are organized and opposed to this. Um, while I disagree with their position, I do respect um, th them really coming out tonight and them being organized for a cause they believe in. And I think we can all be civil. And there's been a few times tonight that we were kind of on the edge of that, which is disappointing. Um, I do believe it's a small segment of the population. Um, there's a lot of folks in Waukesha like me, you know, like the gentleman just spoke. 27 to 35, we got young kids at home. We're not necessarily as civically <laughs> active as we could be, but I'm here tonight to really give you that perspective. Um, let's start with a few statistics. Um, just keep these numbers in mind. 2.9%, 67%, and 43 2.9% is the unemployment rate in Waukesha County today. 67% are the amount of businesses that are struggling to attract young talent. And 43% is the median age of Waukesha County. We're an aging county. It's not bad. It just is what it is. Uh, it's not going to get better. We have a lot of baby boomers. We have to attract young talent. Um, by 2030, that number is going to rise. It's going to be over 43. It's going to be over 43. Um, to me, this proposal is a question of what type of city do we want to be? Do we want to be an aging population, a retirement community that never wants to change? The Common Council really needs to think about that. That's the reason we do strategic planning. We, you know, we chart a path. Or do we want to be a community that embraces change, realizes that we're competing to attract talent? in Waukesha County. Great place to live. Pewaukee, New Berlin, Brookfield, they're all trying to get the same folks. Uh, the gentleman that just spoke. He can, live where, he can live wherever he wants. Um, quite frankly, I, I'm growing a little tired of uh, no one ever wanting to take a chance or do anything. The numbers have to work, let's just face it. But as a community, we gotta be willing to change. We gotta be willing to change things. This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity, and we will, uh, it will create development. There's no doubt in my mind. Now, Kevin, you're going to have to follow through on that. But um, I have two boys at home, and I can tell you. I'm folks, sorry, time. Folks my age, they're determining where they want to live. They have choices. Cost of living is a factor. Things to do with your kids is a factor. Safe community. All those things are factors. So Thanks, thank Mike. you. Yep. Ron Patterson and on deck Mark Bellato. It's pronounced Peterson. Ron Peterson, 1935 Harvest Lane. Um, yeah, I was born in Waukesha. I love Waukesha, and I'll do. And, and I'm for anything that will improve Waukesha. My question, and by the way, Big Top, you did a great job, a great presentation. My question is to you, Kevin. I'm not a math genius but I'm having a hard time understanding the numbers. We're gonna invest four and a half million dollars. They're gonna give us $4 million back. We have to maintain Frame Park today and it has an X factor cost. So if we're already down $500,000 and we're still gonna have to maintain the park, how are we better off tomorrow with them than without them? So. The way the proposal works is combining the new stadium with the redevelopment of the area and moving our maintenance costs and the improvements that we have to make. Yeah, but let's eliminate the TIF because the TIF is an unknown. And we, and we, can, and we can eliminate the TIF completely. How are we better off if we spend four and a half to get four mm -hmm. and then we have to maintain the park anyway? Because we, we're, our costs with, with nothing, with, with zero development whatsoever, is more today than it would be to fill that $500,000 gap that you're referring to. 
I don't understand that. Explain that to me. If we spend four and a half today, and we're going to get four hundred thousand dollar back, how do we make that up? Is that like buying apples at two cents a piece, selling selling a lot of them at a penny a piece, and making it up in volume? Because we have cost. Because we have cost today. We have cost today that we have to do. That's we have. We're going to have those costs today, tomorrow, and next year. Right. But if we do the proposal, we're shifting some of those costs to these guys, and they're taking on that maintenance and operation of that. They're what are taking, those numbers? They're taking on the capital improvement. What are those numbers? It's roughly a million and a half. That we're passing to them or that we have today? That we would have without, with or without the proposal. With or without the, them. Without no. the proposal. Without the proposal, our cost of maintaining Frame Park is a million and a half dollars. Over the, over the 20 years. Okay. Between the and their contribution is what beyond the $4 million? I'm, that's what we're not hearing. The math doesn't work. They're going to give us a, a total aggregate of four million dollars. Mm -hmm. We initially spend four and a half million. We still have to maintain the park, but they're not giving us any additional funds, according to you. They have to maintain the field. That shifts the cost. But it's their field for profit. Right, right. But they have to maintain the field. What? We, what? We, what is our aggregate cost for twenty years for maintaining that field? Just the field, not Frame Park. I, we'd have to. It, it's minimal. It's not minimal. Though. It's minimal because Carroll College takes care of quite a bit of that. Yeah, but there are ongoing needs. We've made an investment in the lights in the recent year. We've made an investment in the backstop. We have to make investments in the fencing. We have to make investments in the turf. Those things add up over the course of 20 years. I understand, but we time. have to maintain that either way. Right. And All the they're going to do is maintain the field. Right. The other piece of that is that we, as part of the agreement, there's additional dollars coming back to the city specifically for frame park which we don't receive today at all and so those two com factors combined make it a less expensive cash positive uh endeavor for the city well the math doesn't add up I i'd be happy it's to sit down with you I can I, with and you. i would love to hear and the we'll, explanation we can walk it through in more detail but, but have the numbers exact when we sit down so yeah, that and, I can understand. And some of that. it is some of it is going to be projections because we can't project everything to the, the exact specificity. I understand that, but we have present day cost. Yeah. And we and if they're assuming all Sorry, of these costs, we'll know up. what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Excuse me. Uh, we've this has been a conversation, not me talking for three it, minutes. It, so I will call your just office so you tomorrow know, and for the most part of it. Okay. I was trying to start and stop. Thank the you. It's pronounced Blado, B L A D O. I recognize a few people here. A dean came around and talked to me a couple of months ago at my house. Sandy, I think I went to high school with him, if he's still here. So I'm a longtime resident here. Uh, my folks came over from Germany in the 1880s. I'm a third generation. I love Waukesha. I've lived here most of my life. Went to high school here, college UW Waukesha. Got married here at Trinity, right around the corner. It's not a blighted neighborhood. It's a very pretty area. I work in Waukesha. I've been here for about 37 years working in Waukesha. My wife uh, went to high school here. Kids went to high school here. Participated in all the parks. And I love Frame Park, but I think this is the wrong place to put this ballpark. It just doesn't seem like it's the right fit. I think there's a lot of other parks that we could put it in around the town, in, in out in the county. Um, it just doesn't seem like the right fit. Uh, I've shot my daughter's... Uh, uh, high school pictures down at the at the uh, gardens down there. My wife has taken pictures down there. In fact, I think I've uh, uh, proposed to her or almost did in that area down there. And I love that area, but I just don't think it's just it's not the right fit for this. And I think there's a lot of other places in the town or in the surrounding areas in the county that we would be best served. I'm all for baseball. I go to a few brewery games. I go to some of the softball games of the complex. I go to some of the hardball games, just still played at Buckner Park, but I just don't see this happening at, at Frame Park. The other thing that kind of bothers me too is I agree with what uh, Don was saying here before about the math. I don't quite understand it either. I'm a long time uh, reader of the Freeman. If you could put some math in there that would explain this, I think that would help go a long way, but I just don't see it adding up to the cost that you're talking about. And like Warren Buffett said, if you don't understand it, then don't put your money into it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Morgan Butler, a uh, lifetime resident of Waukesha on Milky Way Road. Um, my great, no, my 
Yeah, my great grandfather's photo is literally on the other side of this wall. We've been here for so for generations, um, and I am also up here to talk about the finances of this. Um, now we're giving out four and a half, or four million, or however much to this project. We're acting as a bank, giving out a loan. And let's talk about the basic economics, opportunity cost. If we're given out 4.5 or $4 million right now, and we're only getting it back after 20 years, you know, $4.5 million, you know, over 20 years, you know, you add interest on that, $4.5 million is tons of money, way more than that. You know, if we're just, if we're just giving all this away, you know, the, the economics don't work out. You know, yeah, if you, if, if you just look at it on paper and it's, oh, we're, we're, you know, spending four and a half and we're getting back 4.3 or 4.0, like, you know, yeah, on paper that looks like it works out, but we're talking over 20 years. You know, let's talk about just basic interest, you know. If, if we're going to act as a bank for this project, you know, why aren't we getting back interest on this? And, and I mean, I'm going to be one more person up here to say the math doesn't work out in my eyes. You know, and, and I think it would seriously behoove the, the alderman and the city administrator, when you come to the finance committee meeting, don't just come here with these pretty looking numbers, come here with the worst case scenario numbers so that we can have an objective look at this. A seriously, we're not trying to pander to a company, we need to be looking at all of this absolutely objectively and so that all of us get the whole scoop on, on, on what we're paying here. You know, I mean, a lot of people have been up here bringing up, you know, this and that about what if this goes wrong and what if that goes wrong and these costs and that. And I, please, you guys are the city leaders. Please have not just the interests of a vision in seconds. mind, but have the interest of all of these people that have come up here with concerns, have their concerns in mind too. If you guys want to convince them of the vision, show us the true numbers. Jennifer A, 1127, The Strand. Um, I am also in that millennial generation. I am 30, I have two daughters at home. We live 0.25 miles from the park. We walk down there multiple days a week during the summer. My huge concern is traffic, it is parking, it is also the finances. I was a math minor in college, my husband's a math teacher. These numbers, as many have said, in my mind don't work out. Adding the interest to our $4.5 million in over the 20 years, what we're getting back doesn't work out. I understand development opportunities and what could come from that. I get that, but to me, is this really what's gonna change somebody's decision to invest in that area or to move to that area, I don't see that. I don't see a business saying just because there's a baseball park that is open during the summer, I'm gonna choose to set up shop there versus somewhere else. I don't see it personally. I also worry about the parking and the traffic. I've been down there when the breast cancer walk is down there. It's crazy to try to cross White Rock that can makes me concerned for trying to take my girls to the park that they love, that they want to play at. Yes, we have a park literally right across our street, which is why we bought our house. We're right across from Phoenix Heights Park. Yes, it's great, but they love being at Frame Park. Our neighbors love being at Frame Park. We walk down there together. I don't want to cross that street with them. 30 some, and if you're counting, as somebody said, the 80 some days during the summer, where there could be additional traffic there. I don't want that. I want to know, and I'd like to hear tonight, what parking lots you guys have considered for these thousand spots. Because I know the parking lots around that area. And I know there's businesses that have parking lots near there. I don't think they add up to a thousand spots, one. And two, have you even started contacting them to see if they would let you use those spots or not? So I would like, honestly, tonight, where you're at in those discussions, how many have you talked to, 
of those places and where are those places. And I just want to make one comment. I really like that the alderman who has been extremely supportive of this is not here tonight. So that's just my last comment. Katie Engeline, 3616 Williams Court. So I'm located very far away from Frame Park. In fact, pretty much as far in Waukesha as you can get. Um, my history with Waukesha started when I was a child. I grew up in Naperville, Illinois, and came to Waukesha for soccer tournaments with um, Spring City Soccer Club, which kind of exists. Um, I then proceeded to come to Carroll College for um, uh, college, obviously, and got a nursing degree, never went home. Now this is my home. Been here longer than my hometown. My 10-year-old son decided to come with us tonight because I told him where I was going and he wants to save his park. Sorry, I'm a crier. When I was in college, Frame Park was the place where I went for a run. I watched my college boyfriend play baseball. I hate baseball. I didn't marry him. <laughs> but I did marry another college, Carroll College grad, and he now currently works at Carroll University trying to bring in funds for Carroll University. I understand that this stadium is going to be beautiful, except that Frame Park is beautiful already. It will take away from some of that beauty. It will also take away the view of the river. It'll take away the view of the park, ballpark from the walk, that big digital wall you're talking about. My son won't be able to see a Carroll College game without while we're biking down that bike path or playing at the playground because now we'll have to go inside the stadium. My main question is, how is this going to help with your, our community that it's already doing? How is this going to help Carroll College? How is it going to help people see a Carroll College game? Same with the Waukesha high schools. How is that going to help them? 30 seconds. Am I now going to have to pay to go inside the stadium to see those games? How is it getting my son the chance to get into that stadium those 12 days for three hours? What can, we're helping give you money. What money are you giving back to our community? Okay. There's no revenue except for what we're already putting forth. So where's their 10% of your profit back to our community or whatever amount that is? Time. I just want to make it known that these aldermen in front of us can see, can see that this is going to benefit the community more than it's going to benefit to, uh, Big Top because that's really what we need for Waukesha is it, and it has to benefit us more than it benefits a company and a business. Good evening, any, or, excuse me. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mary Jane Sanchez. I'm a um, Waukesha resident, long time since 1973. Uh, grew up here, my kids, you know, so on and so forth. I'm a downtown business owner. I'm also on the Waukesha ID board, and um, I'm actually a recipient of this year's Community Development Award by Common Council. So what I'm saying in, is that I'm very, you know, passionate about Waukesha downtown. Uh, and everything that's going on. All the people that may or may not follow me on social media, every day my pictures are all about City of Waukesha and letting people know, you know, live streaming the parade, so on and so forth. Um, and one of the places is definitely uh, the Fox River Park or the, you know, Waukesha Frame Parkway. So um, I have a question though for the Big Top, and hopefully you can answer this, is have you um, considered any other place in the city of Waukesha that you could put your project? We've looked at, uh, excuse me, it's a good question. We've looked at other parks. A um, couple things. One, the infrastructure here at Frame Park uh, allow this project to work financially. If we were to go to just a, a blank uh, six or seven acre park, 
uh, you'd be looking at two and a half, at least two and a half times the cost of, uh, of the proposed project. So um, the, the mix of the infrastructure at Frame Park and the potential economic development around it are why this public-private partnership works, in our opinion. Well, at uh, four and a half million dollars, you know, everything has costs. Um, so my next question is, um, if the, I guess maybe to the Common Council, if we could find another place, would people in the city consider um, putting that up? Because we really need to have some choices here. It's obvious that people have come here because this, they, they're not minding baseball, as you've heard before, but this is really not the place to do it. We love our parks, you know. Um, they don't put a baseball park at Lakefront in Milwaukee. Um, for a number of reasons. They have it a place where there's a lot of space, a lot of parking, those type of places. This is really not the place for our small town um, to have it. So I want to see if we can possibly have another consideration on the table proposal to have it somewhere else. Let's look at it then and give us some choices. At this point, we don't have a choice. It's being told that this is the place. Let's have some choices. Thank you. Sharon Wardman. Good evening. Glad to see everybody here yet. It's late. Um, I live at 810 Riverwalk in an apartment right across from Bethesda Park. Beautiful. But I have gone for the past 30 years to Frame Park, and I enjoy the tranquility of it. Um, like everybody else here, I think that this is not the place for it. Um, I know I go probably to Frame Park at least, I'd say at least three or four times a month. I'm not as, I don't have little children. I have a dog. A dog can't go to Frame Park. So I have to go to Bethesda Park or Manuka. But my question is basically um, putting this at Frame Park, I was told or heard that this would help the economy of downtown Waukesha. I don't see that because you go to, I go through downtown Walker Main Street every day of the week because I live on the west side right at the end of Main Street. So I don't see how this is going to help downtown with parking because you can't get parking half the time now. The street is narrow. You got parallel parking. You got vertical parking. They're building a new, well, the apartment complex is going to have their own parking underground but anyway that's one of the reasons I'm against frame park the congestion down it's not going to bring people downtown at all from what I see I have tons of friends I'm in five or six social groups that are in Lake Country Milwaukee um, yeah what is that Mequon that I deal with all to go with all the time they will not come to Waukesha because of the parking even some of them like some of the little shops, boutiques, they won't come here. So that's one point. The other point is um, I will be limiting my use to Frame Park just for the reason that the baseball diamond's going to be busy every day of the week. And that's too many people. Like somebody said about the River Walk, I come to that. Yes, I walk from home to go to the River Walk because there is no place to park. Um, the other thing is, are we going to have an option as the taxpayers of Waukesha to vote on this? Are we going to have a referendum so we know exactly how many people really approve of this at Frame Park? I'd love to see it at Saratoga, or I'd like to see it on 164. I would come to a few baseball games. My grandkids love them, but not at Frame Park. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. I just want to say thank you all uh, for coming. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts. We really appreciate it. Appreciate the time. It was a very long night. Uh, we're continuing to provide more information. Uh, go to the city website. Uh, we'll add additional information onto there. And, and then uh, go to the additional public information meetings as well. So thank you.